Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. Please like, share, and subscribe, and leave me a comment if you have any questions on what we're going to do today. Um, I had a viewer request to see what we would normally do um, as far as cleaning the rifle, uh, specifically with this uh, Smith & Wesson response. So we're going to break it down and, and do that. But first, <laughs> what you will need is some uh, a cleaner, uh, a lubricant, uh, some patches, and then the uh, gloves. I like to use Q-tips in the um, to clean up some of the carbon buildup and getting that off first. And then a wire brush uh, as far as for the bore itself. And uh, a jag. I like to use the uh, brass jag uh, to clean out the uh, bore of the uh, uh, of the rifle. Um, you know, some some uh, kit comes with the plastic one. I just find that the uh, the brass one works a lot better, and then a uh, cleaning rod. So uh, let's get started on that, and uh, I'll break down the rifle, and then we'll go from there. Okay, we're back, and we've got the upper and lower receiver separated. Um, so what I normally do with the lower receiver is to wipe the area uh, clean. I don't do anything just uh, in much detail, but just uh, get as much as uh, the carbon buildup as I can. The only two spot that I would uh, normally uh, lubricate is the spring, hammer spring, and the, uh, the trigger spring that's in there. Otherwise, I wipe everything clean and I get much as carbon. Um, I find that the lower receiver doesn't get as, as dirty as the upper. So I focus my attention mostly on there. But again, it says however, how much you want to clean it is up to you. Uh, but it's, it's, a, you know, it's your choice to do that. Uh, I just normally don't do so much with the lower receiver. And I'll set that aside. Uh, with the upper receiver, I would go ahead and remove the bolt and the charging handle. And then on the bolt, uh, I focus mostly on getting as much of the carbon off of the bolt before I put any solvent on it, just to, so that I don't have it dripping with all that, that uh, gunk on there. So I'll get it as much of the uh, carbon off of the bolt as possible around all the area that it, it's uh, is stuck to. And same thing with the charging handle. I'll just wipe that all off and set that aside. As far as the upper receiver, I'll either use a rag or, again, a Q-tip and get in there and get as much of the the uh, uh, carbon buildup as possible just, as, just when it's dry. Once I'm done with that, then I'll go back with a wet uh, Q-tip or a rag and I go inside and get now with it being... Uh, most of it's off, uh, you know, it can be cleaned a lot easier without it dripping everywhere. So I would clean that. And then I would get as much of that uh, solvent off of the surface here as much as I can and keep it as dry as, as possible. And so I can use a rag, go back in there and just get as much of that, all that out. Okay. And then when I'm happy with uh, uh, getting all that uh, uh, carbon off of there, I'll go back and make sure that I get around the barrel, the uh, chamber here, make sure I get as much of that gunk out. And then the thing that I do here is that I'll put in a brush and dip it in solvent. dip it in solvent and then I would go in and scrub the inside of that barrel okay now a lot of people say well you, you should just go one direction I find that it doesn't impact anything it's a uh, it's a um, uh, you know a copper brush or a, bra a brass brush uh, this is a steel barrel so shouldn't have any issue with it so with the brush I, I'll, I'll scrub the inside maybe a couple time once I'm done with that I'll put the jag in. Now I like to use the uh, the brass one instead of the plastic. So, but if you all you have is the plastic, that works just fine. And then at this point, what you're going to do is you're going to push a clean patch through it until you're confident that you are happy with the uh, how clean the inside of that barrel is. Once that's done, 
I normally dip one of the solvent brush in there for, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the patch with the solvent and run it through one more time. And then I run a dry patch through it until I find that the, the, pat, the patch is, is, is picked up as, most, as much of the solvent as possible and it's, it's dry in there. Then what I do is I'll run another patch and I'll put some lubricant on it and then I'll run that in. Now with the patches, you only want to go push it to one direction. You want to go from the, the inside of the barrel and out. Then and then remove the patch and then pull your cleaning rod out. You don't want to push it and then pull it back in. That you'll end up bringing all that that gunk and stuff back into your barrel. So just make sure when you're down to to the part where you're pushing a patch through is to push it one direction only. And then once you've got that patch oiled through, then get a clean patch and push that through until your inside of your barrel is as uh, clean and as dry as possible. It's still going to leave a film of lubricant inside your barrel. Um, again, this is how I do it. Uh, you might find that there are other people do it differently. I've had good result with the way I do with it. So again, maybe uh, some of you can put uh, comment, suggestion for uh, others to how you would normally uh, clean your uh, rifle and that will help out the uh, community. But uh, again, this is uh, uh, so something that I do and uh, right or wrong main thing is clean it and lubricate it uh, regardless how you do it uh, it's, it's it's important to do that because if you're if after a range session and, and then you just stick this back into storage then when the next time you take it out you're gonna have some problems so again I shoot very often so I'll maybe clean every uh, two or three match I'll clean it uh, otherwise uh, it, you know again I just wipe it down um, next time. Um, so if you're going to have it sitting in storage or in the safe for weeks at a time, I say every range session, go ahead and clean it. I myself, I go pro probably every other day. So I'll, I'll uh, clean it when uh, I feel like there's going to be, um, you know, something that that's going to create a, a, uh, uh, a failure. But, uh, again, uh, unless I'm, uh, you know, right before a match or a day or two before the match, I'll clean it test fire a couple of rounds to it and then I, I know I'm confident that everything is good so once you're done and you're confident that everything is as clean as you would like it to be uh, then go ahead and reassemble um, the the rifle now again uh, with that said you already lubricate the bolt and uh, you know a light film on the bolt and again lubricate the inside of the receiver of a light film on that and basically reassemble the rifle <clears throat> now um, one thing about uh, reassembling is you want to make sure that once everything is back together that you do a function test make sure that everything is working the way it should uh, and that all the parts are back to where they're supposed to be so I'm going to reassemble Okay, you want to make sure the bolt move freely. Okay, and that the bolt catches back. And then you want to go ahead and do a function test on your trigger. Right now we're on safe. Does not fire. Flip it to fire. Press and hold. If the hammer should fall, you go ahead and recharge the handle, keeping your finger on the trigger. When you release the trigger, the disconnect should catch it's the hammer should not follow and then do it again and i usually do it at a few times make sure that everything functions the way it should so in this situation everything seems to be good so i'm ready to put it to storage uh and for the next rain session if you have any comments please leave it below if you have any suggestion for uh, any of the viewer please leave it uh, a comment below also again please like share and subscribe I really appreciate you. Thank you for watching.